This is some footage from scuba diving and snorkeling on the leeward side of the island of Lanai from this last weekend. Thought you'd enjoy that if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify or SoundCloud, you can hop over to YouTube and check it out. There's some, we had a wonderful time over there this weekend just enjoying this uh, beautiful island that we live on. So, Welcome to the My Pilgrimage Podcast, everybody. This is week eight. We're talking about sexuality as connection this week. We've been going through a lot of pretty heady concepts and having some interesting conversations. This one's probably going to be the most heady and the most interesting so far, in my opinion. Sexuality as connection is not just a term that we use for physical connection as in sexual intercourse, but we're actually talking about sexuality in a very spiritual sense in the way that it connects us to not only our partner, but to ourselves first and to God and to nature and to all of everything. Again, redefining that term a little bit so that it doesn't just become this kind of physical thing that we've kind of turned it into and it becomes something much more sacred. It's not just a physical act, it's a spiritual act, all of it. So we're gonna talk about that this week. The conversation that was shot in Arizona was between Ryan and Seth and they have an interesting conversation introducing the idea and then the conversation that Seth and I have over Zoom gets into some really interesting areas. So I'm really eager to hear your thoughts we really appreciate the comments we're getting on YouTube and, and on the different platforms. Go over to the Facebook group and let us know what you think. Uh, whether If you agree, disagree, think it's crazy, whatever, whatever. It's all welcome over there. It's a no judgment zone. So hop over and be a part of that community. So without further ado, let's get into it here. Here's the conversation with Ryan and Seth about sexuality as connection week eight. So Seth, as I was reading the book and going through the guidebook, um, there's a statement in there that sexuality is different than sex. Like, yeah. it's sex is a part of our sexuality, but it's not the entire expression. Am I understanding that part right? Yeah. 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 No. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I would say that a sexuality is something that connects us to everything. Okay. And I think it plays out. I think that's why you you see. Um, when people struggle in their sexuality, when we're, when we're struggling with pornography addiction, these kind of things, it affects our connection to everything. Okay. Our ability to enjoy everything. Like I watch you in a place like this and I see how connected you are. I think in that you are experiencing your sexuality, you know? Yeah, I would, yeah, using that understanding of sexuality, I would agree. Like something like this, being out here and going backpacking with all of you guys for a couple of days. And, uh, you know, that helps me or reminds me of, of my sexuality, my, my manliness. Like I really, I love that part of life and, and who I am. So the, the challenge, the enduring, the conditions, the, you know, it rains, like what do we do next? If there's emergency, like all of that brings me back to like, I guess some of my identity and my sexuality. And that's, I mean, what I'm learning from you is that, I mean, is that how you would describe it? I think at some level, I, you know, it, I think in a sense, like when you talk about, I hear you talk about your connection in the outdoors and to what you feel around you and the creation you see around you. And a lot of times you hear people talk about, I never feel as connected as I do when, when I'm in a place like that. And I always think to myself, like, what if we could feel that in, every, in our relationships, in our most intimate relationships? We feel that with each other. There's two where there's that true vulnerability, because in a place like this, you feel that internally. And I think that that's that same functioning. And it's safe in a place like this to do that, but we have to get expose ourselves to other people. It gets more challenging. Ah, I think I I think I get it a little bit better now. Like, cause it's not always about the event. Yeah, you know, saying it like that, I think you know, talking about those moments where you feel most alive, right. like you feel like right. I like I feel most you know in touch or alive in life. <laughs> you know, I know that's redundant, but like. On a mountaintop, in a great view, in a moment, right. you know, right. you're connecting that with this concept of a broader sexuality. Absolutely. And then that same experience can happen uh, in a relationship with a woman. And it can be totally missing yeah. when you're having sex. Like, you can be in the act of sex, but not at all connected with your sexuality absolutely. or with the, your partner. Just like you can hike a mountaintop and totally miss it, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, people all the time, they'll, they'll see her and you're going, look at this. And they're going, 
I'm really tired, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that is that same function. And so the question becomes, like, when we feel connected in a place like this, the question becomes, can we feel that connected to another person? Yeah, absolutely. And if not, how, how do we get to that place? You know? Where our sexuality can open up to that place. And it really does become something that grounds everything. You know? It's intimacy. What yeah. What we're talking about. And do you think that a connection of intimacy helps lower... Um, I don't know, either the drive or the desire for what I would call aberrant sexual acts, whether it's pornography or you know, other things like that. Like once you have started to experience that true intimacy, do you think it, think it takes you further away from, you know, pornography? I don't think so. I think that's some people's fears. Yeah. Um, I, think that, I think that where you find true intimacy, I think you see the absence of shame. And so d- the desires we have, even the erotic desires we have, they, I think they're allowed to breathe, really allowed to breathe. And I think they come through in a much more passionate level, maybe a more authentic level. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, of course, there's life, right? Life circumstances. You got kids, you know, you're going through those spaces in life where things aren't allowed to breathe like we want them to. But if we, if we can come to that point where we can bless our desires as a good thing, as a holy thing, because shame falls away and our sexuality is not seen as some sort of kind of dirty thing that needs to be caged, then I think the passion really comes through. But I think it also comes through in a way that doesn't do damage. It connects you deeper. You know, it creates something that uh, grounds you for the rest of the way you live your life. You know, and I think sex is at its best is like that, right? What kind of connection do you think we have to pornography? I think porn can be defined as an, an actual disconnect. Okay. Um, in a sense, it can serve it in some way, right? I mean, we're talking about if we're talking about a medication. It can serve, at least for a short time, as a a way of us kind of feeling more grounded and connected to ourselves. If I'm seeking intimacy and something to connect to me so I can feel like I'm okay, then I can get that hit whenever I need to, whenever I want to. And I can, on an internal level, at least some some level, fool myself into believing that this is connection. You know, and some people take it to really serious extremes, right? And some people just sit there and just kind of, on a passive level, just kind of dope up every day, you know what I mean? Give yourself a little bit of hit. Um, but I think you can define pornography as an inherently disconnect. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I was, I'm curious because that's how I would see it as a, as a disconnecting thing, not, not likening it to that super deep, you know, whether they're mountaintop moments or those really intimate moments right. inside of sex where you feel alive inside of your sexuality, right. you know. Yeah can't remember an experience with pornography feeling like that. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> like, I can remember not feeling story. alive, if, <laughs> you know, if anything, feeling furthest from alive yeah. after the experience. Yeah. But I can remember being surprised by my wife sometimes, you know, like that experience where you, you, you see something in her eyes that you didn't expect, you know, mm. but I never get that with porn. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> Ever. But it's easier. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's easier. easier. And it's definitely right? a medicating release. Yeah. And you, don't, and you can kind of keep everything kind of tight and controlled and hidden. Never really have to connect to anyone and therefore never really have to connect to yourself. Don't have to face your pain. Um, it's just an easier way to live life. And in a culture like ours where we're, every, we're all running 100 miles an hour, it serves a purpose, you know, for all of us to just keep going, you know. So what do you think, like, our views of our own personal bodies has to do with our sexuality? Like, I think that's huge. What, what impact do you think it has on it? Well, I think it's huge. It's fascinating how our culture in particular has so many body image uh, diseases. Like in, in, in some places in the world, you wouldn't find those things. But like when you see, if you can't look at yourself in the mirror and feel truly at peace with who you are, you are disconnected. You're disconnected from yourself. And that's a disconnect in your sexuality. And, and of course, it's going to send you off in another area. If you can't accept yourself, then it's very difficult to accept another person. And then that, you can just, you know, that's what makes the Internet such a fascinating thing because I can just go get what I need without having to actually deal with that disconnect. Um, it's a, you know, we live in an age um, where we can be served, that disconnect can be served so quickly and so easily. So, um, it makes for an unbelievable challenge for all of us. You know? So when, when a person doesn't have a great or healthy image of themselves or an acceptance of themselves, it impacts not only their ability to connect with other people, but their overall sexuality, yeah, you know, absolutely. if you will, their ability to fully take in life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I brought a, a few years ago, I brought a, a, a team to Africa. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a mission team, we brought them over there. And we had a girl on our team 
had an anorexia. And it was fascinating because here we are in this place and we're serving the poor and we're working and we're seeing this amazing things and, and these kids feel more alive and more connected to themselves and each other than they ever have except for her. Because all, it, she couldn't literally couldn't step outside of that disconnection to herself to even see what was around her. It was very, very difficult. The only thing that got that started to draw her out is that there were some young children came to her at one point and started to kind of call her back to herself. And it was almost like she was reminded how to play. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's almost like our sexuality is a playground we were meant to enjoy. And she was being reminded how to play from those little kids. And it was really interesting to watch her start to connect to herself and then, but then always pulling back away. You know? yeah. And I think that in a sense that, that we do that every day and when porn serves that purpose keeping us disconnected not allowing us to really play with each other you know and uh, I think that what was it Irenaeus said that that man is man is most or God is most fully alive when his children are at play I think it's I think it's a fascinating concept that most people struggle with or maybe just don't understand that um, our sexuality is so much bigger than sex and you know that's the thing you know the idea that we really wrestled with you know, and I really wrestled with in this chapter is coming to an understanding um, of that concept and, and really trying to get my head around that, whether it's in body image or those alive moments, uh, my interactions of intimacy, you know, with others or the times I'm disconnected um, from my sexuality. We're uh, talking about... Okay, so we just watched Ryan and you. You guys had a conversation about it. It was interesting because the conversation, again, in the video series, very introductory, kind of talking about these kind of trying flipping paradigms. And this one, I think, uh, a lot of the previous episodes, we've been introducing ideas like consciousness, um, introducing um, triggers and redefining some of those terms for people to help kind of go, hey, look, it's more helpful to think of of a trigger this way or to understand consciousness this way. And demons aren't, you know, demons is a scary word, but we can call them entities and it's a different thing. And we've been doing a lot of that. Um, Now we're going to talk about sexuality. And this is where I think this is going to be the most interesting conversation because, um, and even you can see with Ryan in the conversation, he was, he was really wrestling with um, sex. I mean, we just, it's such a defined, it's, it's probably the most defined thing in our society. It, it is the thing that everybody, when you say sex, you say the word sex, men all think a distinct thing. Um, yeah. and women all think a distinct thing. And those, where those distinctions are still individual kind of distinctions in general, we are all talking about intercourse or, mm-hmm. or, the, or some, or something that culminates in a sexual act yeah and we're talking about sexuality as connection so i want to define it as sexual this this concept of sexual intimacy because in the in the um in the conversation you were talking to uh you were talking about ryan we're being out in the mountains and saying how connected you are and he said yeah like when i'm out here i feel very manly Mm. i thought that was really interesting because manliness is a um, I wanted to bring up a conversation that I had yesterday with a friend that I hadn't heard from in a long time. And we, and it was, used, we used to be really close when I, we lived in the same town and now we just kind of, you know, we once in a while, we just kind of uh, talk to each other or whatever. And but he called me and he said, and he's in his second relationship, this is kind of long-term relationship. Uh, and he's, he's noticing a pattern and he said, you know, I, 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 I just, I can't, and it's all, and he was of course very stuck in behavioral. Like I, I'm not, maybe I'm not doing this right or I'm not doing that right. Or she's not doing this right. And I made some mistakes here. And, and I was like, you know, knowing him, I said, Hey, you know, that you have never, at one point in the conversation, you, you know, you've never felt manly. It's always been, and that's always been a thing. And he kind of broke down a bit and he was like, I, I don't, feel this thing and and then we started going back into development and kind of we got into middle school a little bit elementary of going where where a young boy is first connecting to themselves through their sexuality that discovery of sexuality is the first time that we connect and if we are shamed in that process or we have a programming that says this is defined this is what this is supposed to look like in you know in the christian world you know you, you know these things are sinful these things aren't sinful in the overall pop popular society um 
a man looks like this, does this, talks like this, acts like this, drives this car, <laughs> dates this yeah. woman. This yeah. is how, you know, um, this is how this is supposed to be defined. Um, but then we really get into that problem of, okay, um, we, we did not learn sexuality as connection from the beginning, right? Like I teach my kids that, that our sexuality is the way we connect to life. It's the way we connect to the whole energy of, the, of creation. We connect to nature. It's, that's the part of us that does that. Um, and that's something that sets us up for the ultimate physical and spiritual connection. One of the only acts that we can do and that completely brings everything and coalesces in that wonderful connection that we, you know, kind of glibly call intercourse. Um, so I, I wanted to, first of all, I mean, the, I don't know if you remember really well the conversation or you'd watch the conversation with you and Ryan. Um, what are your thoughts in, in this terms and how has this kind of developed for you over the years in terms mm-hmm. of your sexuality? If there's, I know. It, it, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's one of these things you go, how much time do we have? <laughs> yeah. I would say that of all the things in my life that have developed and changed and I've grown in my understanding of, this is probably one of the biggest. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but I didn't, you know, I didn't write the chapter on sexuality as connection right. in, in feels like redemption. And the right. reason is I was working on it and I, I called you and said, I don't know anything about this. Right. You know, I know how to get rid of porn addiction. I knew that. I had called I, you and said, hey, we need to write a chapter on sexuality as connection. We need to write a chapter about sexuality. And you were like, oh, okay, okay. And then it was like a couple of days later, you're like, uh, I don't know anything about this. Like, and that was well, the thing. Well, yeah. I want to take us back there. Like, what was the, why, and where, where did this go for you? Well, the, re- the realization that I'd, I had was that I didn't, that porn addiction has very little to do it has something to do with sexuality but that's not really what's a a porn addiction isn't an issue in your sexuality your ego just hijacked your sexuality to deal with the issue right but it's not sexuality itself and so you know people are like oh that's my sexuality well it can show you something what you desire like i've asked several clients i've said you know tell me what kind of porn you're into and they're always like what What do you mean like and, and and what they're into can give hints as to the nature of the pain that we're medicating right you know, it's like you and I both had real uh, affinities for something beautiful. Like that was yeah. a big thing. Give me beauty. Like there was a Victoria's Secret was just as good as anything else. Right? Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Give me something really, really beautiful. Like I never liked certain things, never liked anything rough or mean or, or, or e- even remotely like, and I needed to feel real. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. And that said a lot about the nature of my pain that I was trying to medicate. This right. I wanted something deeply nurturing, deeply beautiful, deeply connected, deeply feminine. Like I wanted wanted that as much as possible. And that's about as far as when I talk about how sexuality is connected to porn addiction, that you know, you can see a connection in there, but but the ego will hijack lots of different things to deal with the pain. If it's using porn to deal with your pain, then it's then it's because your pain has a certain kind of character to it and a certain nature right. to it. Right. But it doesn't, you know, but when we, like for me, the end of my porn addiction was the beginning, the very beginning of an exploration into what my sexuality is, what my sexuality was meant to be and how it works for me specifically. And it's so right. different for every person, how right. it functions, right. Right? the role my sexuality is meant to play in my life and you know what it's for. Right. And then how that translates into relationship with another human being who has sure. her sexuality and her own her her own process and and for me my wife was uh had gone where i was in this super intense my sexuality is like a fire hose and i'm spraying it all over the place her sexuality was right. like repressed get that picture out of my mind here. <laughs> <laughs> her her sexuality was so repressed and so completely locked up that right. i mean we're, we're here we are 10 years later from when i when my porn addiction ended and her sexuality is just now starting to flower just starting to open up she's just now coming to the point where it's something that she's embracing as a as a beautiful experience that she wants to have right, right. you know that's that's just happening so we've been exploring and it became very much about i'm not going to explore sex and sex with my wife anymore i'm going to explore what my sexuality is for me what role it's meant to play in my life right. what my relationship with it is going to be you know, it's like I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. This is really interesting for this conversation. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine who's a mutual, you know, I mean, I guess we can call him a mutual friend. He 
was talking about this with him. He's been trying for years to, to explain to his wife why monogamy is just not natural. And it's just, yeah. I mean, you know, we talked about this a couple episodes ago. Yeah. 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 We talked about this. It's a really yeah. good example. Cause I, cause he was like, I'm like, so he's like, I don't want to be married to other women. I don't want to date other women. I just want to have sex with other women. And I'm right. like, okay. All right. I said, and you know, and I said, so can you see how your sexuality is serving a certain purpose that you might not be aware of? And he's like, right. well, I'm open to that. And I go, so the question then, of course, now is, do you want your sexuality to be something that, it, that tells you what to do or do you want to tell it what to do? Sure. What kind of relationship do you want right. with your sexuality? Right. And, and, and we're, of course, I'm just trying to get him to see through a new lens, you know, where his ego is functioning to hijack his sexuality to get the needs met. And, I, and later on, I had said to him, um, do you think it's possible that your ego is creating a fantasy about sex with other women in right. order to meet the needs of a very young part of you? Right. It's a motherly type of thing. And he just right. said, and he literally goes, I think that's a thousand percent correct. Right. Yeah. Sure, sure. Good. So, so we can see that now let's not curse our sexuality. You know, let's not act like it, you know, I mean, we, there was a post on the site this morning on the Facebook site where, you know, one of the guys was really, you can see he's, he's really, he's kind of claiming that his porn addiction is killing his creativity. When the, when the truth is like that, that's a judgment that he has of his own, sex drive he feels this guilt and he feels this shame and he feels this kind of stuff when the truth is like we have to hold it with a lot of grace and a lot of love and recognize that that you know porn has played a role in helping us helping our sexuality pacify and satisfy some right. type of pain in our bodies right. and then and then let's move to a whole new question a whole bigger question about what role is my sexuality meant to play what kind of power can i wield with this in my own life for my own transformation like right. for me what i've learned about my sexuality is it plays first and foremost, it plays the role of grounding me right. energetically. It's an energetic system. And oh, okay. Explain that. Explain that. Because, because everybody, right. I mean, I guarantee there are a lot of guys right now that are trying to wrap their heads around this, but the truth of the matter is, is that sexuality apart from orgasm, you know, right. apart from ejaculation, apart, apart from masturbation, apart from that is still just a foreign idea that, that, because we've been talking a lot about the energetic body, about the spirit, yeah. a lot and we're going yeah. does the and and what were you explaining is that the spirit has everything to do with your sexuality but but to make that practical right. for people is really hard right to, to right. actually go you can actually experience this in not only in your relationships but you can experience this by yourself right. and they're going to go what i'm going to masturbate with my spirit that's what they're going to think yeah you know well and you know what's funny is i wanted to write that as a response in the facebook thing but i realized like okay i can't give it justice i need to just spend some time yeah exactly. because what i wanted to do yeah. was like hey try this instead of let's masturbate to porn I, I i said i wanted to say i think you should practice sacred masturbation okay okay let's do it and let's get it no let's <laughs> let's talk about what the what yeah. is that <laughs> well that's why i didn't write it in the facebook group because i, I, I wouldn't be able to unpack it enough but uh, it's yeah. a step it's it, for him it would just be a step but it was a step towards hey let's try honoring your energetic experience as you're having as opposed to what the, the ego does was let's get to the payoff here uh, right right let's right, right. And, i want to i need the chemical rush to kind of get over it right because i'm trying to know trying, trying to get yeah, to the I'm trying to get past yeah. it yeah trying to get yeah. past this experience because I, this experience makes me well I, I i just wanted to go i need you to slow down and actually be in yeah. your experience of masturbation for a second and let's watch the narratives let's watch all the judgment you right. know this is bad oh you so you feel good and that's bad Right, you know, right, you yeah, want, right. you deeply want love and your ego is doing the best it can, the poor little thing. Right. It's doing the best it can to get you the love that you're seeking. Mm -hmm. And we're cursing mm -hmm. it and we're judging it and we're judging right. the sensations in your body. We're judging the right. experience. We're ju when the truth is we could just we can flip all that and go, this isn't bad. This isn't wrong. My ego is doing right. the best it can. It's a poor substitute for an energetic experience of another human being. Absolutely. But what you're seeking. Is it? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. It's you know, what, what we want to do is actually get present with the experience for a second right. and with all the judgments and the narratives. And he, and he would actually take a real step forward if just releasing all the judgment of the experience. Yeah. Cause he says, well, it's blocking my creativity. No, it's not. It's the guilt and the shame. It's your judgments and it's your shutdown of yourself because of that cursing of yourself. Yeah. That's actually shutting off your creativity. Yeah. It's not your sexuality. Yeah. Right? And it's not, and it's, and, and of course on an unconscious level, there's probably some God stuff in there. God is cursing me in some way. So I'm, being punished now right your sexuality has been godified they yeah. used that word last week i was like yeah. i've been using it all week i'm like but the anyway, idea yeah go ahead go ahead finish well the, the idea though is that is that there is a 
we have to first and foremost turn towards the sexuality and begin to honor it now yeah. and begin to love it and begin to, I mean, it's like what I tell my kids, my son, you know, I'll see him kind of playing with his ding dong and I'll go, <laughs> what's you, what you doing, man? And he'll be like, like ping pong with his ding dong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do I've got three boys, that, man. So that'll we, be the sign off. The sign off will be that, you know, I <laughs> went to Hong Kong and played ping pong with his ding dong. <laughs> I did that for first grade show. I, I have, I want to tell something. Uh, right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I asked him. I see him, you know, playing with it. And I go, "What's you in there, bud?" And he's like, "Just touching my penis." And I'm like, "I was like, yeah, why are you doing that?" And he's like, "Feels good." And I go, "Yep, it does. Feels good, doesn't it?" Yeah. I go, "Just remember, when you do it in public, sometimes other people don't understand. It's just, you know, you're just feeling good." And he's like, "It says it makes him feel kind of strange. So maybe just do it, you know, when other people aren't watching." And he's like, "Okay." Yeah. But there's no, like, there's yeah. just this thing. And I want to say the same thing to guys on the site sometimes. I want to go, hey, what you doing? Yeah, I'm looking poor and masturbating. Why are you doing that? Feels good. Like, good, right. yeah, good. And then I go, now, now, and, and as soon as we arrive to that point where the shame and the guilt is removed, now we can go, hey, that thing, you're, you're, this feels good. There's this whole universe of experience available to you through, through that means yeah. Would you like to experience something better? Yes. Okay. So this going back to the conversation when you and Ryan had where, where he was talking about, because Ryan had, was coming out of, he had been doing a lot of this work with Triple X Church and stuff. And his thing was, you know, porn is disconnection. It's, 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 it's fake. It's, it, 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 it'll, and it was, it, at that time, I think it was still kind of the enemy. But yeah. at the same time, he was, he was looking at it going because it, it fakes this whole experience that we're looking for something in this genuine experience. And you, and you were like, yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's a fake connection. And that, yeah. so when you start talking about sacred masturbation, it's, it's an interesting one. Cause I did this years ago. Mm-hmm. I, I remember years ago after the, the, yeah, the shame and the guilt was starting to, to kind of fade away. And then, and I started kind of going, Oh, we actually do an exercise in the, in the, in the book with the, with guys where we, we tell them we have to, Hey, and if you're listening and you haven't read the book, we do this exercise where you, we tell you, get into your room, take off all your clothes completely naked, stand in front of a mirror, observe your body. And actually, and then there's these sentences that we have them say and observe. And while you're observing your body, feel, feel internally. Yeah. You're observing your external thing, the body you've been given. And I'm thinking yeah. of my friend in Alaska right now. This is what you were given. This is the only body you were given. You can transform it in different ways through nutrition and eating and stuff like that. But this is it. This is the frame you've been given. You can't have another body. Feeling bad about having this body makes no sense (laughs) because it's the only one you've been given. So stand in front of this and say these sentences. And one of the sentences was, this is my body. I can do whatever I want with it without shame. And I remember getting lots and lots of letters from people that have read the book going, that messed me up really bad. Like that, yeah, that yeah. thing really jammed me up. It, I yeah. started crying or I started screaming or I caved over. I just couldn't because there was so much shame around what this was. Yeah. And yeah. for me, that exercise was really relevant in terms of my own experience. When I was going through it, it was, I was working through that, that exact idea of feeling, you know, and going, and what I found was, that as I connected to myself and started, and I just, it's like I was gaining a rudimentary understanding of what my sexuality was. I was starting to feel the energy of the connection and feeling the energy and how my physical body and my energetic, my spirit were working together. That, and, and, and I was able to integrate that into my marriage, you know, because my yeah. wife was, I remember, you know, one of the big problems I had was that eroticism in my brain, how I had defined it, eroticism, anything erotic or anything beyond just kind of missionary position, you know, that, that was, uh, I, I deemed it bad and just, right. you know, and I think that was programming from when I was a kid or whatever. Absolutely. And so and my wife was like, no, look, <laughs> this is your body. And in marriage, this is how it works. It's just like you're standing in front of the mirror, but now it's two of you standing in the mirror. These are our bodies. This is our body connected. This yeah. is what we have. This is what we've been given and we promise to do this and, and yeah. join this for this life. This is what we're doing. And she was, Maria, you know, was just good at that. She just yeah. naturally understood for whatever reason she understood those kind of, and she said, look, I want all of you. I want even the crazy stuff, even the stuff that you think is, you know, bad or sinful or whatever. <laughs> no, it's all welcome in this, in this so way. that we can experience this in the most powerful and real way possible. 
a lot of men are still stuck in a situation where they're going, well, my wife's not, my wife's not going to do, my wife has problems. My wife, yeah. she's or they're, si- or they're single. We got a lot of single guys single. this morning. He's yeah. a single guy. He's just lonely and he's a single guy right. and he's in that space. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I guess, is there's this promise that if I start to do this type of work and I start to uh, make these kind of connections and understanding of myself that somehow all these, you know, I'm going to be able, I'm, I'm going to fix my wife or I'm going to yeah. find a girlfriend. I'm going to, you know, that's, I guess I, I want to talk about that because I don't want people going, well, if I figure all this out, you know, is that mean that I'm going to find all this or I'm just going to continue to be lonely and it's just going to be sacred masturbation every night now? Yeah. 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 Well, I, of course the answer to the question is, well, what do you want? And they go, well, I want an intimate relationship. Great. Okay. You can have that. And what right. we're going to do is one step at a time. And we're going to allow your sexuality to be a part of a healing process that will then draw in the thing that you desire. Right. And of course, and of course it will, you know, I mean, in, in the end, I, I, you know, I remember a friend of ours years ago, he said, came to me, he's like, Hey, I need to ask something that he said, uh, I want to get married. I go, okay. And he goes, and I realized that to get married, I need to become like marriageable. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's helpful. That's great. And he, that's yeah, a great word a, too, marriageable. Yeah, and he goes, and then he goes. So I need your help to just help because you know me so well to help me identify things about me that aren't marriageable. And I was like, okay. And he goes, so go ahead. I go like right now. You want me to just tell you? And he goes, yeah. And I go, you're still farting and laughing, man. <laughs> you no, know? and we were like right. early thirties. I'm like, you're still farting and laughing, like you <laughs> not like, marriageable. Not yeah. He's like yeah. He goes, hey, you know, that's the thing. He goes, I guess I. I find it, I've always found it kind of, you know, it's just natural and it's funny. And like, yeah, but you know, women hate that, man. They, <laughs> they just, they hate that. And, yeah. and if you want, you want one of them to marry you, you know? And, and what's funny is he was married in like six months. Yeah. Like he just started going, okay, I'm going to take all this stuff and I'm just going to get this. And now that's, that's at its most basic. Yeah, that's the most basic level, right? Yeah. The most basic level. Like but deodorant, you know, yeah. showers, regular showers, maybe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're in a space where you're sitting there, you're single and you're, and you're a porn addict and you're, and you're deeply lonely, then you have to, you know, we have to recognize that there is a love that you are not alone. You are, your love is a self-contained thing. The question is, why can't you realize that? And there is deep work to be done. So you're saying, you're saying for those single guys that are out there and even those married guys that feel completely isolated in their marriages that this, this is a key key component, understanding sexuality. Forget about your wife. Stop, stop fussing about how she doesn't want to have sex. Yeah. She doesn't want to do, she doesn't want, stop. I, I will tell you this, when, when I had my, my crash, you know, I like calling it a crash. Um, when I hit rock bottom, my wife and I weren't having sex at all. There was no connection. In fact, she had basically told me, Hey, you know what? When I'm not going to divorce you, you know, I love you, but we're not going to do this anymore because I can't, she's like, I can't, I can't, I can't continue to try and fill this broken cup constantly when it just keeps leaking and leaking and every time I'm just, and she was, and she actually said it that way. And I remember, you know, looking back on it going, wow, that was profound, you know, but she was always saying, you know, no, I just, I can't continue to pour myself out and have, and there's no relationship. There's nothing coming back. It's just me pouring myself into you and it all leaking out all over the floor, you know, all that love just disappearing because you can't, it's never enough. And then I remember just even just a couple of weeks later, I had, I had been alone for a couple of weeks. And, and I, I want to talk about this for a second because uh, once I kind of really started moving energy, really moving it, like it started flowing and I'm spending a lot of time in just in processing and crying and, and just moving all that energy. And then just in meditation is in spirit. Um, sex as an action, as an like sexual intercourse, it really moved to the background in terms of like my priority. I didn't, it wasn't, I remember one point going, yeah, it's not even a thing. I don't need it. Yeah. But, but I remember when I saw my wife again, she was down in Arizona with her kids and I, I went down and, and also, but I felt this, uh, this assertiveness in terms of connection. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I remember saying to her, no, let me show you this. And it wasn't like, Hey, I, I need to have sex. It was all of a sudden, no, I want to show you what this is like, like what this feels like, because I'm connected internally. I feel my spirit now. Yeah. And I reminded me of what Paul talks about in the scriptures where he says about walking in the spirit. I was like, can you have sex in the spirit? Absolutely. You can. And I experienced, I experienced that. And I wonder how many of our friends have started to understand and feel their own spirit 
yeah. start to feel and let the spirit start making the decision. The higher yeah. self start to drive the, the yeah. conversation internally yeah. and then take in that exact experience into the sexuality with their partner. Right. And, and, and this applies to a single person masturbating. And yes. can you masturbate in the spirit? Absolutely, 100%. Yes, you can. And yes. if anybody's coming, I know we got a lot of people coming into my pilgrimage that are coming from the recovery space or they're coming from yeah. the every man's battle space. Right. And they say, well, I'm struggling with porn and masturbation. That's the classic right. thing. And right. I get that. Okay, but they still are labeling masturbation is wrong. Right. We had somebody post this morning and, and I, I noticed that, right, I medicated so bad. Like, and there was still all this guilt around, the shame around it and going yeah. and, and right. Was, yeah, keep talking about that. Yeah, it's, it's not... It, we, we they need to know that fundamentally it is not bad it is not wrong it is not it is simply a way of experiencing our sexuality are there other ways to experience it that might be more beneficial possibly yeah is a deep loving intimate relationship with another human being going to be more connected than masturbation possibly right but there's not it's not bad. It's only bad when we treat it with such disrespect. We treat our sexuality with such intense disrespect and yeah. such intense shame, guilt, and judgment as yeah. if it is in some way a bad thing. So that to that guy that posted this morning, you your next step, the next time you want to do this, slow down right. and work into your sexuality. Begin to feel it as more than just your hand on your penis. Begin to feel it as an entire experience your entire body is having. Slow down and move into that experience without judgment, without shame, without guilt, and recognize that is your body. And every ounce of that feeling is a good, beautiful thing. In yeah. that situation, you're, he's going to run into the energy that he was trying to numb. Right, right, right? of course. As soon yeah. as he goes inward, as soon as the, the attention is not about just get, the, get to the orgasm so I can numb this thing, can I just get the medicine? As soon as you go inward, you run into the energy. And then it's like, oh, oh no, we're not going to go towards you know, orgasm, we're going to actually move yeah. energy first. Well, and, 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 and you might even find that your sex, that your, your system will switch and your sexuality will start to be used to help you process the energy. Right. Right. Like it's, it's right. very common for me that yeah. when I'm feeling jammed up or I'm feeling ungrounded, you know, and in the work that I do requires a lot of grounding because I move so much energy for people and, you know, and you know, work with my daughter, it's, it's a unique space where I'm left in energetically most of the time my sexuality grounds me. There's oftentimes when, when I'm moving in to a space where, where an orgasm will cause me to move tons of energy, you know, and have, you know, what's known as a tantric orgasm where all of a sudden right. your entire energetic system is pushing energy up and out of your body. Right. And all of a sudden you're, it just, you find yourself be, being almost cleaned out and cleansed. Sure. By it. Sure. And that's not a moral concept. It's not a concept of, Oh, I guess I did it right. So God's giving me this gift. That's a matter. That's a matter of turning towards your sexuality as more than an orgasm system and more than a drug delivery system. It's an energetic system that is consumed by all the 3000 chakras in your body and the seven really large ones and all that system of energy movement through your body is part of how your sexuality functions. This is where the entire tantric tradition came from. There's an ancient, 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 ancient under way of understanding how our sexuality connects us to earth and to ourselves, right. and to God, and to each other. One of the in, in some of the other traditions, there's there's really really rich understanding right. of how this works. Just the Christian tradition, there the Christian tradition none. botched this worse than anything. Well, that's ever well, actually, so let's get into that just for a second because I do I do want to I want to address it. when we when we say Christian uh, tradition, we're we're also talking about Western tradition. We're talking about kind of Western pop culture because even if you're not a Christian, if you've grown up in the church, you've kind of grown up with in the United States with a Protestant kind of leaning because our entire culture just a few there. years ago, even our public high schools were still teaching scripture and the Bible and, and a Protestant interpretation of that. Yeah. Jesus, there just was next to no discussion in the gospels. You know, we got three years snippets of his life. Um, right. Very, very little detail in terms of, you know, it was, it was mostly in generalities and parables and, and other teachings and right. stories, but there was well, most, it's mostly, most of our understanding is from Paul. Paul. We had the, uh, mo, uh, there's what, 16 letters from Paul. And yeah, and, the, something like that. yeah and, and I might be wrong on the number, but, the, but pretty much the new Testament is a book of, by Paul. And for the yeah. most part, right? The majority. Yeah, it's a big, yeah. yeah. And Paul was celibate. Um, yeah. And the only teaching we have in, is from him. Um, how would you summarize Paul's teachings on sexuality? Um, I think that, I think that Paul's teachings on sexuality are incomplete at best. Right. 
Yeah, because they're letters so- to church. He's writing letters to churches yeah. that he's planted, church leaders, right? We don't, I mean, every single one of his writings are a letter. Yeah. To they're somebody. a letter to someone who is, and depending on what you think about the book of Acts, if he had a part in that or not, but, but most people attribute that to Luke, but there's, you know, there's debate, but he, 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 his, is thinking around sexuality. You see him over the course of the New Testament processing a little bit because he's getting hit with questions. Right. Because, because Jewish communities and some pagan community, what's just happening is people are, are beginning to follow this new way and they're coming from different spaces with different understandings of how sexuality works. Right. And they're wrestling like the Greek, with the Greek culture is like, was pretty yeah, hyper pansexual yeah, all over the place, right? Fuck everything. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. Just, you know, all over the place. And that's, that's the, the F that's, word again. I got to put the little E again. I, oh, I, like, can we just get through an episode without the little E? <laughs> sorry. Well, the, 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 well, this one's all about sex too. You're going to have to put it in there anyway. Right. right, right, right. So right. this one, you know, I mean, like, you know, there's that question about what one of the churches was, I think it was Ephesus, maybe it was talking, you know, some that a mother and her son, or it was like a, somebody that were, were sleeping together and they're going, yeah. Hey, this, is this, and they're basically writing Paul saying, is this okay? Is this okay? Right. They're going, they're looking so, at it going, Hey, we're good. The Greeks are doing it. The Romans are doing it. We're all good. And we got this thing right. called grace now. If we're okay and no, and God's not pissed at us that we can do yeah. this. And Paul's yeah. going, Oh, he's scratching right. his head going, well, here, you know, let's not do that. And he was, yeah. and he was wrestling with the same crap we're wrestling with now. So trying to, <laughs> right. what's okay, what's not okay. Well, right. that's when, they, when, when you see this teaching around, you know, all things. And he right. says, all things are acceptable. No, not all things are beneficial. Right. Right. So he's right. basically saying, let's let whether it's helpful or not become the judge of whether it's, yes, we should do this or not. Okay. He you know? does. He shifts it right there because we know yeah. that we know that it's implied in Paul's letters by Paul himself. You know, he doesn't explicitly explain what's happening. It's implied that he, he, he has, he has some issues of himself in terms of his own and what seems to be his own sexuality, his own sexual right. attractions and stuff like that. And there's, there's a lot of hypotheses out there that he had same sex attractions and other things like that, which was, which was radically and weirdly completely unacceptable in a lot of those cultures that right. it was it was considered sinful and and you could be stoned to death and all kinds of other things right yeah although like in greek culture and roman culture you could have sex with a little you know you with 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 minors and that seemed right. to be okay but right. but having them two men you know it was it was considered unacceptable so paul's wrestling with this stuff himself his his choice for behavior management was celibacy Right. So he completely like, right. He never got married and everything. And he even talked, he was talking to Timothy in one of his letters to his friend, Timothy saying, basically, I, 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 w- I wish that anybody who's doing this work and pre- basically, you know, helping to start these churches would not get married. Right. But my advice is if you are just marry one woman. Yeah. And, um, and by the way, I think he saw right. that. He saw that because he, he understood that's Roman culture. Roman right. culture was if you're going to be a ze- you know, like the soldiers weren't allowed to get married, for instance. Right. Roman right. soldiers couldn't get married. Why? Because they had to dedicate their lives to this thing. To the Caesar, yeah. And yeah. and also a lot of his theology is, hey, we're all getting out of here pretty soon anyway. Right. Because right? he, he definitely believed that that Christ was coming back before he died. And yeah. 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 So it was like, let's just get let's just do as much good as we can, get as much of this gospel right. out as we possibly can, and then let's just leave and it'll, it'll all be good. But he was also like, I think that there was probably a little bit of overwhelm dealing with the fact that Christianity or followers of the way, as it was called was marking a brand new thing in history where religion was becoming essentially abolished in that space. So the right. pagans could come in, the Jews could come in, everyone could come into the space and hear everyone's right. okay, but they're right. also bringing all these clashing cultural constructs that they brought from their religions, right. the way Jews tre- treated sexuality, the way pagans treated sexuality, the right. way, you know, Zoroastrians and all the, and, and, right. and Buddha, you know, I mean, he wasn't, yeah. I mean, he probably wasn't counting many Buddhists or anything like that, but he was, they're all treating sexuality differently. And here he is. This is the way I'm doing it. And he doesn't really have that much to say or teach about the subject. They talk about sexual immorality, which of course is a contextual thing, right. you know, completely contextual. Mm-hmm. And, and he was saying, you know, it's like even when they, when they sent some of the questions that they had theologically to the council, you know, Peter and, and John and these guys, right. and, and they, they brought it back and they were like, eh, well, here's the deal. They had said, Try to abstain from sexual immorality, whatever that is, right? Yeah. Don't eat food sacrificed to idols. You know, here's a, here's a couple of right. things you need to do. Right. Other than that, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. Every right. day, work it out. Just fig- and it basically work saying, just figure some shit out. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. figure it out. And, and what we're doing essentially with guys coming into my pilgrimage, people coming in with all their garbage that they've taken in from the evangelical church and all their teachings, which 
you know, coincidentally, was really the core of our problems stem from Augustine and his interpretations of Paul and his sexual repression. And that's where people started beating themselves, you know, for years just to, you know, purify themselves from their sexual desires and, and pain and yeah. yeah, and all that, all that toxic garbage. People are bringing that stuff into the group and we're going, hey, work out your salvation yeah. with fear and right. trembling. Right. Like, humble yourself. You don't know everything. Just let yourself right. work into this. But first and foremost, let's turn, let's, let's take this thing that we've been given called grace. Yeah. Which if there's anything that we can take away from the New Testament and say, this is helpful. Grace yeah. is it, right? Yeah. Where we go, yeah. everybody, every, you're okay. okay. Everybody's okay. okay. Your sexuality okay. is okay. You're, you're, you feeling good is okay. Yeah. The porn you, industry finding, is, you finding that one, that porn actress's naked body and I think finding that attractive. Okay. Totally. Okay. Totally. Okay. You, find, <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if we got it, you know, if we brought everybody in, it was just a part of my pilgrimage said, Hey, tell me your, your wackiest sexual fantasy. We'd probably go, Whoa, there's all this fascinating stuff. <laughs> It'd be all over the go, place. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. You know, right. well, I, so, I so we do, we can't, we can't address, say this without addressing kind of what we talked about um, on Rush Shah's podcast, that there are sexual, there are sexual uh, desires or sexual attractions that some people have that are criminal. Yeah. And, and destructive. right. And criminal and destructive. And, and that we go, uh, and so if someone says I'm, I'm attracted to little boys, I go, not okay. Right? Well, I, I would say but, this, yeah, your, say attra- your attraction, what you're experiencing, that's okay. Acting okay. upon that attraction, not okay. Okay. Right. But, but the thing is though, we have to meet it there first with grace and love before right. we can actually move into, let's talk about where this came from, how this right. came from that. That's why, like when I have clients come to me, I have some, some that's relatively simple. I'm a Christian white porn addict and. Yeah. I just, you know, I've got some issues and we, and we work into it and, you know, three months, four months, they're good. Yeah. Then I, every once in a while I have people come in with really complicated. It's like, I have this issue and this issue and this issue. And I don't know why I have this issue and this issue. And I'm not sure. Right. Stuff like is. what we're talking about. Yeah. There's yeah. these really complex stuff and they have no idea where any of it came from. Right. But that's where, that's where it's like, okay, good. It's a good thing. We have a community and we have teachers and we have healers and we have people right. to help us work into that stuff. Right. So there's no question that, I mean, a lot of the people that are going to be listening to this have their sexuality has done some damage. Yeah. Right. But what we have to understand is that sometimes that damage is done, not because it's destructive itself, but because you're doing it inside of a context that holds, you know, the sexuality is a fundamentally bad thing. Like so many marriages, not, not many people have a wife that goes, Hey, all of it's welcome. Come. Yeah. That's a, that's a somewhat rare thing. I'd be willing yeah. to bet that most people listen to this are like, my wife ain't like that. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Know? Exactly. And, and, and <laughs> I want to be clear and to be fair to my, my wife, but also to be fair to my, myself, um, my wife can say no to anything that I say. She, sure. she goes, look, if I, she told me flat out, if, if I don't want to do something, I'll just tell you. And yeah. I was like, and then you can just get over it. <laughs> and I was like, right. Oh yeah. Okay. It's great. And it's actually worked out really well in that, that because I've done my own personal work in terms of my internal thing like that, there, it, there's nothing that I go, yeah, I really want to do that. And then, and then she says no. And I go, man, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it becomes a problem. You know what I mean? It's, it's me. It's, it's I, honestly, yeah. it's me continuing to work on my, myself all the time. Sure. And, and, but, uh, but you get, I was working with someone the other day as a client of mine, this yeah. woman. Yeah. And she, she was like, well, I just feel like my husband's, he's only happy if I have sex with him. Right. And I was like, this is my wife pouring, talking about what she was describing. She's pouring right. herself out, pouring yeah. herself out. Well, and I said to her, I go, can we, can I tweak that story for you? She goes, yeah. yeah. I go, he's very happy when you have sex with him. And she's like, oh, yeah. I go, see, I just, just different tone, different, word, different yeah. tweak on the story, different word. And she goes, yeah. I go, so is it, is it bad that he, it makes him happy? She goes, no, I guess not. I go, yeah, it's not. I go, but something in your ego sees it as a threat. Right. Go, can, we, can we get into that now? Sure. Because a lot of that, like for my wife, that's how it was. My sexuality was this kind of detestable thing because sure. that works into how sure. her sexuality was deeply repressed. And, and think about it. Think about the repression yeah. that's been done towards feminine sexuality. Yeah. There's, more, there's probably more repressed women in the world than there are men because they've just been crushed for centuries. Sure. Sure. Right? Sure. So th- there's all these women that are fully cut off from their own sexuality and their own, yeah. in, in their own they see their own body parts as, as dirty in some way. And they never, right. I mean, my, my wife... My wife, when she was you know, a kid, when she was like 12, 13, and her, she first started coming to her, you know, her womanly body, and, and mm-hmm. she's beautiful, you know, and yeah. she was wearing a skirt that was above the knee at one point, and her father came in and told her that she's dressed like a prostitute, and she wow. would get, you know, she would get cursed for wearing anything mod- that, was, that would actually show some of that feminine shape, sure. you know, sure. and so, you know, she, so for her, sexuality was just broken and crushed and broken and crushed, and she's found it at the deepest levels, even in her own ancestry, right. you know. 
And of course, for centuries, I mean, women used to, women that were sexy women used to be burned at the stake. Now we put them on videos or whatever, but like, right. they used to be burned at the stake because you're a witch because you got that pastor was attracted, attracted to you, yeah. you know, you know, right. and that's, so therefore you're using magic in some way to make us all, to woo, woo all the hey, men. I'm actually, I'm halfway through reading The Hunchback of Notre Dame right now. Um, Are you really? Well, I, a few years ago I was in Paris. That's and a I, good and example, I, man. And I, I was at Place de Vosges and that's where, uh, uh, that's where, um, uh, yeah, Victor Hugo, the author, lived, and it's this beautiful place in Paris. If you ever go you, to Paris, go to Place de Vosges. Um, there's some wonderful restaurants, and we, and my wife and I had a wonderful meal there. And I went into to Victor Hugo's house, and um, you know he was an ex- he was a British man, but he was extremely honored by the French. In fact, he's buried in the in the uh, in the Pantheon in Paris. He's only, he's the only non like French. He's there, and he was his funeral. He was was under the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. He was this wow. very highly, highly honored uh, man. And anyway, I started reading. Uh, I bought a copy, a hardback copy, a beautiful copy of, the, of Hunchback and Notre Dame in his house. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, you know. And so yeah, I yeah. bring it home and I was reading it. And everybody knows the, the Disney cartoon, you know. Sure. And it's all about this, Which is by the not way. for children, by the way. <laughs> not for children. <laughs> no, no. I watched it with my kids. And my kids were like, oh, what is going on with the, you know, the scene where, where the, pat, the priest is having his yeah. moment. Yeah. And she's dancing in the fire seductively and stuff like and that. I, on a positive note, she's pretty good looking, isn't she? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. But my kids are just going, what is I'm like, well, he's, he wants to kiss her, yeah, he and wants to kiss it's kind of hard to explain. Cheek and it wants to, yeah. yeah, and, <laughs> and hold her hand, and he wants to, to kiss her and hold her hand, and that's not okay. <laughs> 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 <So>. <laughs> anyway, it's 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 actually interesting because in the book, um, she's written um, Esmeralda is a young, she's like a teenager. Mm. She's she's quite young, and she has this little the, the little lamb and everything, the little pet lamb and everything. And um, it's super intense. And it was interesting because I'm thinking, when it, especially having made kind of a personal connection being in Victor Hugo's home, and I'm going, wow, what is he working out here as, yeah. a, as a writer? Because, I mean, you're a writer. You, you know how personal that experience is. Um, if, if you've written anything by hand and he's writing the entire thing with a quill, yeah. um, he, what is he working out here in terms of, of how to, because like, and this is kind of what you're talking about, working out our salvation is that yeah. when you have desires and you have things inside that yeah. you have to work out, you have to work them out, which means you have to process, you have to move energy, you have to come to that central space and you have to have the, the hard conversations with your, your partner. You have to continue to have those. That's, that's something that has to be worked out. It's sure. not an instant thing. And sexuality has everything to do with everything. Yeah. So when you go into the mountains and you feel that manliness, like, man, I'm in the mountains. <laughs> I mean, the last guy had this all the time. And in fact, people, get, you know, like we go out in the mountains and you just feel this, you know, that something would rise up inside me. And I remember feeling sexual, you know what I mean? Like feeling an, an, almost an arousal, but it wasn't like I was like, I have to have an orgasm now. That's not what it was. There was something that you know, lifted up inside yeah. of me. Yeah. And you could, and and we can kind of stupidly call that manliness. Well, the term, the better term is you felt grounded. I felt grounded. Yeah, felt grounded. connected. Just like just, just like grounding, in. you know, grounding a wire. If you're jumping a battery on a car, when you hit the grounding wires, when the energy starts to flow, right, and just and, moves and, and it's it grounds. Moves. Yeah, and yeah. your sexuality yeah. grounds you. And for yeah. most people, it, it's meant to play that role, but because we right. cast so much shame on it, we charge yeah. it with so much guilt and so much shame. It's been hijacked completely, yeah. like you were saying. It's totally beginning. hijacked. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, so, it doesn't get to perform its actual function for us. Right. So the job, the job right now, and if we, uh, we try and end these episodes by, by saying, hey, look, we, we're going to go now into, a, there's a practical thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, there is, um, how, do we, how do we help men yeah. and women? How do we help people then now take this into their space? Where, what's step one? Well, step, step one, obviously it's different for everybody, right? But, but I would say it starts to, we start to contemplate. I, I would, if for everybody listening to this, I would say, I want you to contemplate this question, literally sit and meditate with this question. What role is my sexuality meant to play in my life? Right. And if we can start to you know, like recognize that sex is good, fundamentally, sex feels good, fundamentally, and that's a good thing, right? Everything about it. That this is not bad. Even those of you guys who are like, well, I look at porn and I do these kind of things. As we do it, if we can contemplate what role is this meant to play right. in my life, fundamentally, we have to shift our view that sexuality is not a burden to carry. It's a 
gift that we have that's meant right. to help us. Right. So what role is it meant to play? And how, I mean, if you're someone like the guy that was posting this morning, who, which we, and by the way, I know who it is, but we don't use the names here for a reason. But if you're posting this morning about this, you know, when you're talking about my, uh, you know, the, all this kind of this guilt and this shame around that, I would tell you, slow yourself down. Yeah. yeah. Move into it, not running from it. Don't Move, try to get yeah. past it. Try to fully experience it. Internally. And then watch what happens internally yeah. and watch what happens. Right. And, and if that's part of that's a porn star, then observe it. Like what role right. is she playing for you? And what is she substituting? When, you know, earlier when I, I didn't fully unpack it, but when I said it's a poor substitute, it is because you can't experience the energetic system and energetic body of a porn star. You just can't. You're not experiencing that. My wife walks through my field and my whole system reacts, right? She walked over this morning, gave me a little right. kiss while I was working on something. And my, my Kundalini, which is my root chakra, just went, boom, just exploded yeah. on me. Right. And I was like, whoa. And I started coughing. I started moving energy immediately right. from a little kiss. You know yeah. what I mean? Because of her energetic field moving into mine. You don't get that with a porn star. So yeah, right. it is a, it's a poor substitute. But we have to start with observing our sexuality, observing what role is it playing. I remember, and maybe this is a good story to end on, you know, years ago, and I, I, if I've, if I'm sure that if I have clients that are listening, I, I probably told them the story at some point, but it, you know, when my son was, was born and he was breastfeeding at one point, which is a deeply sexual experience. It's yeah. connecting, it's yeah, it grounding. Is. And so I don't just, care if anybody on here thinks that's weird. It is flat it is. out. It is it's, a it's sexual se- It's sexuality. It's sexual. It develops our sexuality. It, it, it develops our, our, you know, our relationship with our mom and, you know, in terms of breastfeeding or even not breastfeeding. Our relationship with ourself, yeah. our relationship yeah. with desire, because yep. that's the desire. I mean, my son still desires that and you yep. know, he's six years old and he still wants to breastfeed and yep. he'll go and he'll ask, but he just knows that he has to ask. And, and Amy will be like, you know, why do you want this? I just want to feel good. Yeah, okay. And they'll have a conversation about it now, which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah. But what, what it is, I was watching him breastfeed as a baby and I'm sitting there and I'm reflecting on my own sexuality because I was mm-hmm. really at the time, like I said, I was still just learning about my sexuality. And I just said to him, I said to her, I go, hey, when, when I come to you for sex, does it feel like that? And she just goes, oh, she kind of light bulb, you know, she goes, it feels exactly like this. And I was like, oh, and I was just noticing, oh, my sexuality, I'm trying to do through sex with her. I'm trying to do the same thing he's doing. Right. And, and I, and I didn't judge it, even though I can go, that means I've got some serious work to do because there is an infantile part of me trying to still get its needs met like he is. Right. And as long as I'm doing that, one, I'm not experiencing the fullness of my own sexuality Two, That's going to be repulsive at some level to my wife because mm-hmm. she doesn't want to breastfeed two babies. Right, but, you know, especially not a you know thirty nine yeah. year old or whatever it was at the time. Yeah. You know, hasn't shaved in three days. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and it's not going to be an experience that's going to help and awaken her sexuality. Either. Right. And so exactly. my goal was to move fully into mine, so that she had we could see more and more and more the freedom to move fully into hers. Right. Which of course ends up leading to this really really beautiful thing now, where we can just communicate and explore and experience, and it's all good. Well, you know, that's a really good place to end it. I want to ask everyone that's listening to to take a second after we sign off here um, and after, a, you know, I'll come back and kind of summarize here, but to take a second and close your eyes, unless you're driving, please do not close your eyes right. um, and just breathe. We've asked you over the last couple of weeks to feel a lot into yourself, into your body internally, to, to get our awareness away from this external experience and go internal. Um, we, you know, we'll ask people to feel the center in your chest. We'll feel your hands. And this might sound a little weird, but your, your, your actual genitals and your whole kind of core torso area and stuff, that's all part of you. You know, uh, I think that in pop culture, especially for the male side, we like to pretend that the penis has its own brain and it's, and it's its own thing, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. No, it's That's not. another ego hijacked narrative that says that somehow that, that uh, your penis has its own will and it's going to yeah, do its own you're thing. you thinking with your penis. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Just to put it lightly, that's bullshit. And it's yeah. not some, it, the truth of the matter is it's very much you and a part of that body, the body that you've been given. So feel that as connected to yourself. And if you feel disconnected, and this sounds a little odd, but if you feel emotionally disconnected from your penis, like it's not yours, you have to do the work to welcome it back to that body with grace and love 
and kindness. Yeah. And, and the same goes for any woman that's yep. listening to this. Same thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. To, yeah. Every, bre- to, to, to the clitoris, to the vulva, to everything, every ounce of it. Yeah. The breasts do it, right? It's, yeah. it's a, a, as, as odd as it sounds, you have to do the work to welcome that and accept that as a part of your body. Yeah. If you're a woman and you are constantly comparing your body and your, your breasts and your everything else to what you see on your, your, uh, on the social media and on Hollywood and in the movies and stuff, stop, yeah. stop. It's fake. It's not real. What is real is with you right now. Yeah. You know, gentlemen, if you have, weirdly decided to buy into this narrative that your penis is supposed to be a certain length, a certain size, certain shape. It's supposed to be something other than what it is. Stop. That is a bunch of bullshit. It is not true. It is what you have right now is exactly what it's supposed to be there. And it is meant to not just work with your physical body, but your spirit is involved in that process too. You have to welcome it. You have to take the time in meditation and contemplation and just being in the space, just stand right now and, and, and feel your entire body as one connected unit and okay. every part of it's welcome. Yeah. Yeah. And so, for those, and for those that are, that are masturbation is a part of what they're experiencing right now. Okay. And they're, you know, we're going to get rid of this word of struggling with it. You're, right. you're only struggling with it because your ego is hijacking the narrative. Right. What 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 a what it's time for you to do is actually move into the experience on a more full level and actually you know what I call sacred on a sacred level and mm-hmm. honor the experience and then see what shifts for you. Right. right. Obviously, we don't want to be controlled compulsively and unconsciously, but the reason it's unconscious is because you've called it evil and mm-hmm. you've repressed it and you've mm-hmm. charged it mm-hmm. with an energy that turns it into an obsession. Exactly. Right. And that's the yeah. thing. That's what guilt and shame are. It's an energetic charge that's on it. Yeah. And so and, uh, just welcome it into the room. Welcome yeah. all of it back into the room. Yeah. Let it be there and honor it. Right. Yeah. And then see what happens. Yes. And see what shifts and changes over the t- over the next few weeks as you as you begin to move into that experience. See what changes in the relationships you have with other people. If you have a partner, what what changes with them? Even if if you're going to work and you're feeling that more connectedness in your physical body, more connectedness in your spirit, you're starting to feel more whole. You will watch, you watch the things around you shift and change and you'll start to understand this idea of sexuality as connection. It's it, instead of just sexuality as right. sex, you right. know, as orgasm, yeah. you will watch things shift around you and start to understand that sexuality is connecting you to everything, every living thing. So how are you feeling right now? What's going on in your body? We talked about some pretty intense stuff right now. What is going through your mind? What are the thoughts that come to mind when you begin to think about these concepts? Please let us know. Go over and have that conversation. Keep it in your head. Not as helpful. So go over there. Talk about it with a Facebook group and see what you think. Or, you know, just send us an email. Mypilgrimage3 at gmail.com. That's mypilgrimage and the number three at gmail.com and let us know what you think and we'll talk about it on future episodes next week we're going to be talking about processing processing is another term that we are introducing as a way of moving energy and a tool for healing a um, lot of questions that we've gotten about processing so make sure you show up for that if you're enjoying the podcast go to the mypilgrimage.com there's a patreon link if you feel like you can or it's something that you can do and you can drop in five bucks a month or something like that to help us to support this and also help us kind of grow the technology and get better at it we'd really appreciate that no obligation whatsoever so so thanks again for listening we appreciate it we'll talk to you next week aloha